YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here with a recap to the fight that we all just finished watching between Javante Tank Davis and Roly Romero. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure to go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video just like this one. Without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. So Javante Tank Davis versus Roley Romero. Um, I'm not gonna sit up here and act like I'm a huge boxing analyst or fan or anything like that, but I definitely had a goal to really pay attention to this fight. Um, Tank is really the, is probably the best fighter as of right now in his weight class. And um, I really wanted to pay close attention to this fight just because I'm a person that yeah, it's great to have the the superheroes or just the, the great the greats and stuff like that. But me personally, I always like to root for the underdogs. You know, when any sport it goes, I always like to see the big dogs knocked off. You know what I'm saying? Because that underdog story is what I live for. I love the underdog stories, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whether it's combat sports like boxing or whatever. I just love seeing the underdogs prevail and actually thrive and. In this fight, I really didn't have a person that I was going for, um, but I definitely would have liked to see Rolly Romero actually win, just because, again, I like the underdog story. Um, but definitely looking at this fight, you know, he asked for it. You know what I'm saying? Tank is a really, really good fighter, man. Um And, and I'm going to be honest, he asked for it. Rolly Romero asked for it. Coming into this, into this fight... It's the difference between being confident and cocky. In the press conferences, you hear Romero talking all this trash, saying he's going to beat the out of him, you know, and, and obviously Tank being Tank, he isn't going to back down. He's going to talk his stuff back, and he even went as far as pushing him off the stage during the last weigh-in and stuff like that. So it was a good back and forth leading up to the fight. They sure as heck sold the fight. They sold the fight, man. Um, but actually looking into the fight as it got kicked off early, I would actually say Romero was winning the fight, in my opinion. You know, it, it just looked like Tank wasn't really landing his punches. It looked like he was just, you know, being ease, um, easing his way into the fight, just trying to fill him out. Really wasn't landing anything. Um, and, and it just didn't seem like he was locked in from the start. I really thought... Tank was going to lose this fight. I'm not going to lie. Because it just didn't seem like he was locked in. You know, he was all talking to the crowd. He was talking to his mom. You know, laughing. You know, and and, and it just didn't seem like he was locked in, in my opinion. So I was like, man, that could be trouble. Because he's not taking Romero seriously. And Romero, although he isn't a, a, a fighter that is, like, coordinated, he fights, like, weird. Like, he fights like he's not coordinated, like unorthodox i guess you would call it in boxing terms right although he isn't coordinated i'm like he, he's strong so if he catches tanks loafing he, that could be trouble that could put him to sleep um so i'm like man tank tripping bro i i, I was like yo i'm like if he don't take this dude serious he might actually you know lose but then again like i just said for this guy Romero, he's strong. Tank is strong, too. And it just take one punch with him. And you see that each and every fight. Who was the last fight that he had before the Santa Cruz? Uh, all the uppercut. It's just you. See, it's just one punch, and you're done. When, when you're fighting Devontae Davis, bro. Like, I, had the, I literally have to realize and had to realize, like, yeah, he could be doing all this dancing around the ring. It looked like he ain't landing nothing. Looking like he losing the fight. But then in a split second, just like that, he could win with just one punch because he can put you out. Just like today. I thought Romero was winning the fight up until that point. You know, Tank was landing a few good punches, but I, I definitely saw Romero connect uh, more. But Romero went in there loafing one time, and he ran right into that jab. Ran right into that jab and it put him asleep. That's how powerful Tank is. And even Tank himself said it. I didn't even throw that thing that hard. I just I just threw it a little bit and he ran right into it. Simple as that. 
Um, me personally, though, I'm not a hater or anything. You know, I, I like Tank definitely for sure. Um, but I, I also, again, like to see the underdogs prevail at some point. I just like to see a good fight. Um, I'm mad that this fight didn't go at least 10. It, it, it was over in the sixth round. Of the, uh, the ref threw in the white towel. Gave uh, Tank the win by knockout, knockdown. I definitely wanted to see it go 10 because I'm like, bro, we waiting almost up until 1 in the morning to see this fight. And it don't even last 30 minutes. Don't even last 30 minutes. So that's me, though. That's my opinion on it. Um, Again, I'm not no boxing analyst. I'm not a super huge boxing fan. But I had to come on here and speak my mind about this specific fight. Because Tank is the most popular fighter in all of boxing right now at this current stage. And I, I really wanted to pay close attention to this fight. But again, more of the story, man. It with boxing and with this specific fight, it doesn't matter who is winning, bro. Because at any point in time, things can switch just like that. Because like I told you, I felt like Romero was landing punches and he was actually winning this fight to begin with. But Davis landed one blow. And it sent him night-night, man, and it won him the fight. That That's the moral of all of Tank's fights that I've watched, really. It's like, he doesn't have to be winning. He doesn't have to be you know, beating up on the opponent. But all he has to do is just land one time. One time. And his opponent's going to go down. Now, what's next for Tank? He already said he's he's opening to he's open to whatever. Ryan Garcia. Um, a couple guys uh, uh, that, that that's up next. He said, it ain't no, what he say? It ain't no safety on his Glock. You know, so he he's ready for whatever. Um, I would like to see him fight Gary Russell just because he's from Washington, D.C., from this area. Um, I would love to see that. Uh, but let me know for all the boxing people that is really into boxing, man, that knows a lot about boxing. Let me know who you think Tank should fight next and who is actually going to give him a good competition, um, a good run for his money, man. Um, because Tank is definitely the best fighter as of right now. He's the most popular fighter in boxing. I'm just gonna speak specifically for his weight class, though. But again, for all the people that's more into boxing that knows more about this stuff, let me know what you guys think about this fight in the comments section. Do you think it was rigged? Do you think it was um authentic? How are you feeling about Tank? How are you feeling about Romero? Uh, Rom uh, Roly Romero's future after this fight what's next for both of these guys leave it all in the comment section down below as always me and boy Juan God you like comment subscribe on the road to 4,000 subscribers hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already I'm out peace